Hello viewers, this is Paladin of Odin and this is some more Magic the Gathering Online. This is a one-on-one -on -one legacy match and I'm taking out my Orox deck again. Hopefully uh, this match will be fun or funny enough to warrant posting. Now, I would have much rather had a third land in my hand since I have the uh, Cultivate and Curse. And I'm going first. But I do have the Bull Orox for two. They are one of the saving graces of the Orox. Um, what would you call it? A tribe? Creature type? Uh, there's only four Orox... Well, four legitimate Orox, everything else is changeling. But the regular four Orox, um, you know, the the mana costs are two, four, five, and six. So, being able to play one quickly, um, what happened? Did it die? No, we're waiting on him. Okay, there it goes. For a second there, I thought, um, <laughs> I thought MTGO had died on us. But it's unusual. Our opponent here is playing a 90 card deck. So maybe. He's playing a for f an actual for fun deck. But I am worried because he's playing blue. Damn, I really wish I had gotten a land right there. can't remember for sure, but I know I'm running at least 22 land in this deck. I've drawn two, so that means there's 20 left in the deck. It's a little better than a 33.333 chance of drawing it. And it'll be my third turn, so statistically I should draw land. But something that you find out the hard way playing magic for long enough. Uh, statistics are all fine and good in the math class, but in real life they don't really matter for Jack. You know, you can say, you know, all you want that, oh yeah, I should be drawing a land next turn. Whether you do or not is entirely different. But I'm hoping that I do, so that I can pull out of this uh, not-so-great hand. Nope, but I do get a mana source. And no reason to attack. Three mana next turn. I can play Cultivate, get a land into play, or two land into play if I don't draw a land. Or, I could just go with the Curse and start attacking with the Bull Orox. But honestly, I think I need to get the land He's uh, building up an advantage here. Oh, and he got another mana maker. Okay. The shuffler has decided screw you. You don't get to have land. And 
and the situation is the same as last time. There's no point in attacking. He'll just block with the wall. But now I have a total of five mana. So... Well, let's see what he plays. Before I get ahead of myself. Oh, Scoot Mob! Oh, I have fond memories of that little guy. So... Curse him... And the second Aurochs. And this time I will attack. Because the only way he can kill it is if he blocks with both of his uh, creatures that have a power. Of course not. Even when your opponent's playing a 90 card deck, they can't, uh... They can't keep from playing, uh, cards like that. I think I need to um, neuter the scoot mob. Unless, of course, he has a counter spell, which I fully expect him to have. Oh, and I just realized it doesn't matter. Five or more lands, he's going to have that regardless. But if he doesn't counter the acidic slime, I'll have a 2 2 death touch. That is, if he ever decides to play. And he hasn't said anything, so... No real excuse other than uh, him just being ridiculously slow. Unless, of course, his internet connection is crap. I think I should bring up the chat and put it over here. Just in case his uh, internet connection goes out and he disconnects, then I and you guys will know that he's disconnected. I have to say, I'm starting to think that that might be exactly what happened. He is taking a really long time. But then again, I don't know where this guy lives. He might be in a time zone where uh, he ordered a pizza and it just showed up. You know, those kind of, that kind of thing happens playing online. I mean, I'm in the Pacific time zone in 
the United States. So if he's anywhere in Europe, for example, he could uh, could have just had a delivery because it'd be it'd be easily within business hours. Or his internet connection could be just this bad. Which, if it is, then honestly, he shouldn't be playing online if your connect if your internet is this bad. So, most likely he's going to block the bull aurochs with the wall, and then just take the two from the werebear. Or just not block. Okay then. Anyway, depending on what he plays, depending on what I draw, I'll have six mana. If I get a land, it'll be seven, which will let me play Orox and throw down the Blanchwood Armor, which I would most likely put on the Bull Orox since it already has Trample, and since the Acidic Slime will most definitely be dead by then. But if I'm stuck at six... There's no reason not to throw down the Rhymehorn Aurochs. Also something that, uh, when I was building this deck, uh, the snow mana symbol on this, I know it's a, a tiny thing to, to think about, but I wanted to put all snow-covered forests into this deck. But, uh, surprisingly, snow-covered lands are ridiculously expensive. Even for the electronic versions of them. So, when I was building this deck, as I've told you guys in the past, not 
put I don't put much money into this game because I don't have much money ever to put in this game. I couldn't afford to buy snow-covered basic lands for just that one reason. So I got stuck using regular forests. So his ability I can't use, but you know, even not getting to use his ability, he's useful. Hmm, trinket mage. One or less. I'm trying to remember, is Neverenthal, Neverenthal's disc? I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Oh, he went for Sensei's Divining Top. Okay. But, uh, the card I was talking about, the disc, I was I'm wondering whether disc is a one drop or not. Because I honestly can't remember. So, he's got two cards in hand. has one available mana at the moment. He could get a second. So, looking at the top three, see what he's got. If he has an answer on top. And I'm attacking with the uh, ooze because uh, there's no real reason not to since he has death touch. And to kill him, he either has to sacrifice the scoot mob or he has to throw these two in to kill it. Okay, so he's at four. I'm at 23. Ooh, now he's at three. So, hopefully, in the top three cards of his deck, there isn't going to be anything good. That way, next time I attack, I'm pretty sure... Well, let's see, I have four creatures, he has three. He could, he could play a creature and, well, no, because the... Uh, Orox is ridiculous at the moment, but the Scoop Mob could counter that. But like I was saying, he'd just need one more creature in play. Oh, now he's just outside of what I need. And he played a creature. So. Alright, Orox would be a 3-3, three, three. Bull Orox would be an 11, oh no, uh, plus 1 plus 1 on every creature. Hmm. So he'd be a 3-3, three, three. he'd be a 4-3. He'd be an 11-10, he'd be a 12-10, a 4-4 four, four, and a 3-3. Three, three. I think I pretty much just have to swing at him and see what happens. Because he has to block... He could let the werebear through for free. He'd be at one, but he'd live. But that would mean he'd have to block the other three creatures and not let any damage go over. So he has to group block him. He 
could throw that in front of there. Okay. Oh, and I forgot about him. So we'll trample over for three. They will both die. Oh, that's right. The uh, ooze. He didn't block the ooze. He needed to declare it being blocked and then activate that ability. So, slight misplay on his part. Cost him that game. Well, I won't say it cost him that game because I would most likely would have still won. Okay, I have to mulligan that one. Oh, that's not good. I needed needed to get another land or better hand. But unless he picks up the pace, he's most likely going to time out during this game. Or I'll lose this game. We'll go to game 3 and then he'll time out. Either way, I'm probably going to win this match just by virtue of him being so slow. I mean, he spent... How, we have 25 minutes, so he spent... 12... 17 minutes on game one. Oh, I really need mana. Shuffler. Okay, looks like I'm getting mana screwed this game. But I need to take the long view that uh, I most likely will win the match. I can do with it. You know, I was thinking. You know, since I bought, uh, since I built this deck, um, one card that I could throw in that technically counts as an Oroch, since it's a Changeling and it's green, and its abilities are green, is uh, Chameleon. Col uh, is it Chameleon Colossus? The the four drop four four pro black that can boost itself. And uh, that would be a very nice card to put in this deck. It would mean that I'd have more creatures, more options. It's still a 4-drop, which... Uh, the problem with this deck is getting a good... Getting a good land draw. You know, what's what's even the point of putting enough land in the deck when the Shuffler won't let you draw it? 
and then when you do, you know, if you go back and uh, rebuild your deck and add more land, the uh, shuffler decides, oh, you put more land in your deck, now you'll only draw land. And why didn't you attack with him? Are you just... I mean, are you really just sitting, holding that back for its tap ability? Oh, you're into the five minute warning already. How unexpected. And it's still your turn. Well, that's useless against me. And he's down to four minutes. Is he just going to time out in the second game when he pretty much has me dead to rights? Because it's looking that way. Which is uh, rather unfortunate. You know, the first game was uh, pretty interesting. I had rather hoped that this match would be completely interesting. Why is it so hard for me to get good matches with the Orox deck? Seems like every time I play this deck, the Shuffler decides that it's time to screw me over, or somebody's playing a try-hard deck in the for-fun uh, what is it? Q. I guess is what you'd call it. Or the match turns out like this. You know, if I ended it at the first game, wouldn't have been a bad video. But I got to show you guys what Orox can do. But I just had to stick with it, with a guy that I suspected would time out. And it makes me wonder, you know, what what is the point in starting a match? Because it was him who started this match in the uh, lobby. Why would you do this? Why would you start a match when you can't play efficiently enough to even finish a second game? I mean, if there's something going going on in real life where you live, you know, in your house, you know, whatever's going on, just quit the game. Go deal with what's going on in real life. It's more important than the game. If it's your internet connection, you know, I hate to be an asshole, but don't come on the... Don't get into the lobby. People don't want to play with people who have shitty internet connections. Or, if this is a tactic that you're using, hoping that I'll quit first... You don't know me, but I'm incredibly stubborn. And I don't quit matches unless you're playing a counter control deck, land destruction deck, or above all, sliver deck. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the match. I won because my opponent was incredibly incredibly slow.
And I really wish that this match had been better to show you guys, but the first game was good. Orox came out strong, punched him in the face really hard. That's really all I wanted to do with my Orox deck. So as the timer counts down, let's see, because I don't know how long my outro takes, because I was kind of hoping to time it out perfectly, but eh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. But here we go. If you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button for me, and I will see you in the next video.